Hi everyone, today we're making focaccia, and not just any focaccia, but this beautiful bread art focaccia. I am so excited to show you how to do this, so let's get started. So to get our focaccia bread started, what I have here in the mixing bowl is a cup of warm water, two and a half teaspoons of active yeast, and a little bit of sugar, maybe a teaspoon of sugar. We've let it just sit for about five minutes or so, so it gets nice and foamy, and you can see that your yeast is doing its little magic. So now to this mixture, what we're going to do, and here, by the way, I have my bread flour that we're using for the focaccia, um, five cups or 680 grams. We're going to add just a cup to get our dough started. So in here, I'm just gonna put a few spoonfuls of the bread flour. And then we're gonna get our mixer going with a dough hook just on low speed. And we're gonna just let it kind of come together for a few seconds. I'm gonna take a spatula then and get the rest of that flour incorporated. And then we'll add the rest of our ingredients. So as you can see, it's kind of pulling the flour from the sides, but I think I'm gonna give it just a little bit of help. And take my spatula, if I unlock my mixer, that would be helpful, and just kind of help get some of that flour down into the actual warm water mixture. Help it, help it along a little bit. After all, we all need a little bit of help from time to time. So, okay, let's get that. And I'm just really watching for the flour to be incorporated. This is just our starter dough anyway, so we've still got lots more mixing to do. So as you can see, it's getting, uh, it's still have that flour on the side there, but I think we're looking pretty good at this point. And now to that, we're going to add another cup of water. We're going to add, this is a teaspoon of salt. Oops, come on out. And then we have here two tablespoons of olive oil, all into the mix. And to that now, we're just gonna add probably mm, half of what we've got here of the flour, maybe a little bit more but we wanna save some of the flour out because focaccia dough overall is kind of a, a moist, sticky dough. Um, so, I mean, we don't wanna to put too much, oops, and we want it in the bowl. We don't wanna to put too much flour in all at one time, just in case we don't actually need all of it. So here, we're gonna get us going. I'll speed it up just a little bit once we get the flour starting to incorporate in. You probably could do this by hand, but um, it's gonna take quite a bit of elbow grease for you. So if you have a mixer, by all means, hey, make it, make it a little easier for yourself if you can. Um, but as you can see here, it's starting to grab the flour from the sides of the bowl. And what we're waiting for really is for the dough itself to start pooling away. So we want to wait until this kind of gets all incorporated as much as possible. And then we'll see the dough actually start to move away. I can tell by looking at it that it's still a little bit too wet. Oops. And so I'm just gonna start to add a little bit more of my flour. Okay, 
let's still have a little bit left in the bowl, but let's get this guy going. <laughs> Can you see the flower kind of flying up? Am I in a dust of flour? But here we go. So now you can really see that the dough is pulling away from the side. It's getting all nice and doughy in that ball sort of form, which is great. I want to just stop it a second and feel it because um, this, it's pretty tacky. It's a wet dough anyway, but I still think it could probably stand just a little bit more of the flour. And then with this last addition of the flour, what we're gonna do is just let the mixer go until we can actually touch the dough and it kind of springs back when we touch it, if we leave any of the flour in. So it's getting incorporated. I'm gonna have a nice little cleanup um, when we get ready, but that's all right and just kind of watch her go. I don't know about you, but if your mixer ever jumps like that, like you see that, I learned just by chance that if you lock it, it's a wonderful thing. So um, most of these mixers have a lock on them. I never knew that before. So, okay, here you see it's the dough itself is pulled away from the sides, which is excellent. And now we're really just are waiting to get that gluten formation going for our bread. This is a no knead bread, so we're not pulling it out. We're not kneading it on the counter. It really is uh, an easy bread and it's delicious, you'll see. All right, so let's, let's check and see what we're, what we're doing here. Oops, unlock it, Stephanie. Um, and so it's, you can see it's still a little bit sticky. It's, when I push it, it's not necessarily, you know, resisting. So I want, I'm gonna let it go just a minute or so longer because our gluten needs to really kind of activate. We don't want a cakey bread. We want an actual nice chewy bread. Actually, there are times when if I walk away from it, the mixer kind of does a little dance. And uh, thank God, I've never walked away long enough where it's danced and fell off of the counter. But there's a word to the wise. All right. All right. That actually, I think, is looking really good. So now what we're going to do is we're gonna let the dough rest. And what I have here is a bowl with some olive oil in it. And I'm going to put this dough, clean hands, best tool. I'm going to actually put this into the bowl. And it helps to kind of coax it out a little bit with the spatula. So I'm going to put a little oil on the spatula. And then get our dough into the bowl. See how, you know, I think you guys can see that it's, it is a, it's a moist dough. This would be a pretty tricky dough to try and do any sort of kneading on the counter, which is the beauty of not having to do that. So let me get rid of that here a second. And now you just want to take the dough itself and get it all covered with the olive oil that you put in there so that that olive oil flavor starts to get imparted, but also so it doesn't stick to your bowl while, while it's rising. So here is that. We're going to cover it up with a piece of saran wrap. And then you're going to let this sit in a warm uh, area of your kitchen. Um, it'll probably take 
about an hour and a half, maybe two hours to rise, but we want it to double in size um, before we do anything else with our focaccia. So we're just gonna let our dough rest and um, we'll come back and then we'll, we'll shape it up. So this is what our focaccia dough looks like after it has risen for a couple hours. And now we are ready to get it out of the bowl and we're going to place it into two smaller pans. Now if you want, you could make one large sized focaccia, but I kind of like separating them out um, into two smaller ones. So in order to do that first, we want to get some olive oil, a, a good amount, um, in our pans and then we're just going to put the dough into the pans and separate it. I'm just going to eyeball it half and half if you you know are wanting to be more exact by all means weigh it out. Um, sometimes I do weigh it out but for right now we're just going to eyeball it. I also put a little bit of olive oil in my hands so that the dough doesn't stick while I'm getting it out. So now we're gonna take this wonderful dough that is just so nice and soft and fluffy. And here it is. I'm going to eyeball half. It's not the most um, appealing process, I guess, or, or aesthetically uh, appealing process, but hey, we're gonna go with it. And then, we're just going to take our hands and, and start to stretch the dough. Um, and see, that's another good reason to put some olive oil on your hands so that the dough doesn't stick. Now, as you can see, this dough is kind of coming back to itself. So that just means that those gluten strands haven't quite relaxed. You can walk away from it for a few minutes if you want um, to give it time to relax but we're just gonna keep stretching it out. Now, when you separate it into these two pans, um, a lot of times the dough won't make the sides even, but we're just going to stretch it into a rectangular shape and get it as, as far out as we possibly can. We want the dough probably to be about, I don't know, maybe a half an inch or so. Um, in in depth there and as you can see it's kind of it's still like slippery and, and a little bit coming back on me but I think it's good we're getting there we're getting to the shape we want and then we are just going to let this kind of rest now before, before we put it away, because it's gonna need a second rise here, but before we put it away, let's go ahead and make some dimples. These aren't gonna stay in necessarily because we're gonna dimple it again, but I like to put a few dimples in to start it out with and just kind of let it do its thing. We can put just a little bit of salt on it at this point. We'll put more salt on it once we actually get ready to bake it. But there we go. We're gonna put this one away because we're gonna let it set. If it can rest overnight, that is probably the best thing because that'll really give the dough a chance to kind of get some flavor um, and some really good rise and, and just nice, nice texture to it. Um, but if you only have a few hours, that's okay too. Just know that maybe the dough won't quite be as flavorful. So I'm just gonna set this aside for now. And I'm gonna put this guy um, away because I'll stretch him out later. But I wanted to show you, here is 
the dough that has, I, I made this last night, so it's been in the refrigerator overnight. And then I took it out about a half an hour ago. So I let it come to room temperature. I let it rest out of the refrigerator. And now it is ready to finish off for the oven. Now we're gonna do our bread art thing, but if you're not so inclined to do the bread art piece, what we are going to do just to finish it off, if you, all you want is some delicious focaccia, is again, put our dimples in and you can see, gosh, you can see the bubbles from, from the yeast. Um, it really has a wonderful texture and rise to it. This is a great recipe. So here's our dimples. We are going to put a little more or a lot, depending on, on what you want to do, um, olive oil on top. Um, I have a brush here, so I'm just going to kind of brush it around. You want those dimples, and then hands are a great way to do it too, but you want those dimples to have some olive oil in it. Don't be shy. If you need to get some more olive oil into those dimples, then by all means, but it gives it flavor when you get ready to put it into the oven, and it also then, you know, helps to keep the dough nice and, and moist and flavorful. So there we have our dimples with the oil in it. And now we're going to add more flaky sea salt. And you know, whether you're decorating or whether you're just going with it straight like this, you, you're gonna put your flaky sea salt on. So we get some sea salt over the top. You know, if you'd like, you can chop up some rosemary, you can chop up some thyme, whatever herb is your favorite, and you can put that on top of the bread as well. And then once that is done, if you're just making it plain, you're gonna put it in a 450 degree preheated oven and you're gonna let it cook for about 15, 20 minutes. But for us, we're gonna move on to the decorating piece. So now we're going to do what I think is the most fun part, and that is decorate our focaccia. For me, it is really the most creative piece of baking the bread. And not only does it add a lot of flavor, but it really adds a wow factor. It starts with going to the grocery store and picking out all of the things that you think, you know, hey, this is gonna look good as grass, this is gonna look good as a flower. I mean, there are just so many different things to make your bread unique to you and delicious. So what we have here, what I found in the grocery store when I went the other day, was some green onions, some asparagus, I have little mini bell peppers that I sliced um, long ways. I have mushrooms. These are pepperoni, a little bit of prosciutto, green olives that I've halved. These are, and I, I just discovered this just the other day. These are little miniature red onions. I didn't know there was such a thing. So I sliced some of those up. They make really cool flowers. And then we just have baby tomatoes. And here are more mini sweet bell peppers, only for these guys, I cut them crossways instead of long ways. So you can make little flower decorations in a different design using the same red bell peppers and orange and, and yellow. All right, so all of that, let's just show you some of the basics of, of how to even get started with this. So the first thing I do, and remember now, we've already dimpled our bread, we've already put olive oil in our dimples, and you can see the olive oil in the dimples. We've already put some flaky sea salt on. So our next step really is to frame out our flowers. And everyone is a little bit different, and you can certainly do your own thing. But what I like to do is just kind of start with the stems. So you're, I'm going to put asparagus here as one stem. I like it to kind of curve so it looks actually like um, the, the stem of a flower. 
I'm going to probably in the center take one of my longer green onions, maybe make that a center stem, and you really have to kind of push fairly firmly in so that it gets to stick in the dough. And then, I always like to have, you know, you just don't want, I mean, in kindergarten, I remember making little flowers that had one little line and a couple leaves. We want to do a little bit something more than that. So we're going to do some little offshoot stems. And I took another little piece of green onion, and I'm just going to kind of place that like that. I'm going to take another piece of green onion. And you know, sometimes it, you don't have the right size. So all we have to do here is get our cutting board and gosh, get a knife. Just a second, guys. Um, uh, here we go. All right, see, it's, you never know. Mise en place, I should have had my knife out. Um, so here we go. Um, I'm just going to slice this green onion and get a little smaller stem that's a little more pliable and I'm going to place it on the other side of my green onion like that. And then I think on the far side here, we'll just do another asparagus stem. So that kind of gives you a structure, that kind of gets you started. Now it's what else do we want to do? One of the things that I did want to show you because I just was playing around the other night and figured this out and I was like so proud of myself that I thought, well, I want to show everyone. I have these little pepperonis and I was trying to figure out how can I make a little floral rosette with pepperonis. So this is what I did. I, let's put our onion away, put our knife to the side. So I just took my pepperonis and I laid them kind of overlapping but with a scallopy edge and take as many as you like you can take if you want small you can do maybe three if you want something a little bit larger like I am here you can take um, five and then all you need to do once they're all laid out is just start to roll the edges and you roll it all up and trust me they will all stick together and then so you have this roll I'm just going to cut it in half like this and then as you see here you have the start of a little rosette or a little flower like that and then I am going to just place this here on my bread and then you can kind of play with it a little, little bit and fan it out a little bit more but isn't that just the cutest thing i love that so let's take it our other half here we're going to do the same thing we're just kind of spreading our leaves out and pinching it sometimes if you pinch it down at the bottom you can spread it out even more but then place it on your focaccia and spread it out and look at that i love it if you guys can see that i mean i just think that that is gorgeous so there are many different things that we can do with all of these different vegetables and i want to just show you one other really cool thing here so these little mini uh bread onions see how they kind of have their little lines that go in between the different layers of the onion. Well, those will look beautiful as they cook up. So I'm just going to take one of these and I am going to make this one of my little flowers. And I think I'm just going to put the pointy side out, but I have several here, as you can see, and I'm just going to maybe put three of these guys along this asparagus but then you can fill in the sides with a little color and so i have just the end edges of my my little red onion and i'm just putting them all around here's one more Ooh, that's a pretty one but there we go we have this 
And now you have a darling little flower here. The only other thing that I'm gonna show you before I just kind of finish this up is, um, is here, I have little green olives. Green olives like this that are halved make awesome leaves. And to make things look a little bit more realistic, you always wanna have some leaves on your flowers, right? So just place some green olives anywhere you'd like, and maybe even take, this is rosemary, take a few of the rosemary stems and place it in between like some of your, your flower petals or you know wherever you feel nature might put some greenery and and just have fun with it um, be as creative as you like because at the end of the day it's going to be delicious no matter what it turns out looking like and everyone is like your own piece of art um, it really is awesome the thing too to keep in mind once you get all of your vegetables and your meats and whatever all you are putting on your focaccia bread before you stick it in the oven it is really important to take some more olive oil and make sure you cover all of those vegetables and all of those meats very well with your olive oil otherwise they will burn up in the oven and nobody wants that so i'm just taking my olive oil i'm putting it over my veggies and then i probably will add just a little more salt to it but then it goes in the oven for 50 15 to 20 minutes and when it comes out we'll put a little more olive oil on top and we'll be ready to eat. So I just wanted to show you the finished product. I've taken some of the prosciutto, the green peppers and red peppers and everything and, um, and created the design. So I'm just gonna put our finishing olive oil onto everything. Remember, we have to coat it really well so that it doesn't burn. And so we're just getting it all over. Don't worry about putting too much on. It's focaccia. I don't know if you can. I guess you could put too much on, but um, we're not we're not worried about that at this point. And here we are. I'm gonna put just a little more salt over, not a lot because I just don't want it to be overwhelmingly salty, but the salt will give it a lot of extra flavor. And there we have it, you guys. Your finished focaccia bread art ready to go into the oven. And I know I've told you before, but I'll say it one more time. 450, 15 to 20 minutes. When it comes out of the oven, brush it again with some olive oil and, and you'll be ready to enjoy. It is really best the same day, but if you do have leftovers, you can wrap it up, refrigerate it, and just heat it up right before you serve it again. Enjoy. So here's our beautiful bread right out of the oven with its last little bit of olive oil covering. All that's left now is to cut this baby and give it a try. So I'm just going to, let's see, I think uh, let's slice it right down the middle here and get a nice big piece so you can see the inside of the bread itself as well. So here we have it, guys. Ooh, so you can see the structure of the bread itself. It's light and there's some air pockets in there. And okay, here we go, going in. Mm, you have got to try this recipe. 
there's a hint of the salt from all of the flaky sea salt that we included. It's a soft bread with a crunchy outside. The toppings are delicious. I really do hope you try this recipe soon.